The Chair, Part 2 The Doctor, Demons and Angels I sat on a chair to the side of the room and rubbed my head, as the shock that I had gave me a massive headache. It throbbed as I calmed myself down again. The smell of mould filled my nostrils. I looked up to find myself in the building that was that I walked in again. The room was like the one I had just been in the second before. The dentist chair was there with blood stains that Dwight had caused. The chair has shifted its position not slightly. The metal headband was on the f- broken off and lying on the floor. The wires laid scattered across the floor. The generator was on setting six, and the control panel smashed. I grimaced at the pile of white hair that was over the chair and, and floor. The nurse didn't clean it up. I, I, I wonder why. I murmured to myself. This place is slowly driving me mad. A loud bang rumbled through the rooms, making the floor shake. I ran towards the sound of the bang and found the stairs piled under me. No! How the hell am I going to get out of here? I got onto my hands and knees and stared down into the hole. If I was to jump, it would end up impaling myself. Maybe it would stop the visions if I die. My thoughts wondered... No, stop being silly. It's just it's just the paint. It's toxic. I said to myself, trying to con- convince myself, convince my body not to do it. Suddenly, I felt pressure on my back. It felt like two hands. And the force made me look foolish or forward. I turned round to see Dwight. His mouth was red and scabby. His black... Uh, his Black hair was greasy and covered in blood. He looked at me with pleading eyes. Standing up, I followed him into the, into a room. It was plain. This well, this was an over exaggeration. There was no colour at all. Only the white walls and the outside light seemed to decorate the room. The windows were six foot high and three foot across. They were. Th- there were three of them. I was good at measuring with my eyes. Seems that was my job. Of course, I will stay late to finish stuff. I don't mind not sleeping tonight. My thoughts taunted me. Dwight walked over to the bed as I sat down. The bed was the only thing in the room. This, this alone would drive anyone mental. Under the bed laid a pile of papers, envelopes, pens, a chart hang off the bed. Um, do you mind if I look? I pointed to that chart. He shook his head, then faced forward. I flicked through the first six pages or about what he has to t- take, how many d- times a day. Around 25 drugs I counted. After these pages were was patient history. I read it out loud so that Dwight and I could hear it. The male came to us at the age of 20 after he killed his father because he thought he was Satan in disguise. Mother was severely beaten. Patient 078 thought she would, uh, she was the father's familiar. Days, day 103. He is still claiming the demons are after him, but the angel will stop them trying the new electric shock punishment. No improvements after year one. Stepping up shocks, drugs haven't worked days, and he hasn't worked. It's the best if he dies on us now. Year 3, day 10, no news. He doesn't talk to anyone. He tried to kill some people. He only talked to this nurse that I implied a little while ago. I heard him calling his safety line. Year 3, day 17. After letting the nurse go, he hasn't stopped screaming or lashing out. The demons are back. Forevermore will these delusions carry on. He's gone beyond help. 
case's update would be very brief and pointless. I put the chart back and looked at Dwight. His eyes were red with tears streaming down his face. I sat next to him and put my arms around him. He cried into my shoulder and I saw and I, with a shocked voice, hushed him and then faced him. You may be not completely completely sane but you but work with them. Anything you do right will help you get close to getting out of here. You have to understand. The doctor smashed him through the door and looked straight straight looked straight at Dwight. What have you done? And the doctor's face was red and angry. Like he stopped him from finishing his sentence. He threw a piece of junk metal at Dwight. The piece of metal hit him from the left side of the face. This made Dwight fall off the bed and he started sobbing and crawling away from the high authority maniac. Then that stood in the door. The doctor came over and pulled him off the floor with his hair. Dwight tried to let... Dwight tried to let shout occasionally, catching the doctor's face. This only made him madder. You little shit. What the hell do you think you're doing? Breaking equipment? I break your bones. The doctor reached out for Dwight's leg. I had to do something. I, I grabbed the piece of metal that hit young Dwight's head and threw it with all my strength at the doctor. The doctor collapsed onto Dwight and a puddle of blood was formed. Shh, Dwight, please be quiet now. It's okay, I've knocked him unconscious. Dwight had blood streaming down his face from his own injury. Thank you, Angel. I'm I'm Jane, I'm, but I'm not the angel we speak of. I pulled the doctor's body off him and threw it into the hallway, making sure he was not seen. Then I turned round to find myself in the stairway ruins. I must have fallen off when I went to the dream state. I felt something sticky on my fingers. On my good hand. I- I'm bleeding again. A piece of wood had sunk into my flesh by its draggy edges. It gripped onto my muscle but with a bit of force I pulled out the wood. As I pulled some of the flesh followed making me cry for help. A voice echoed round the halls, making me jump out of my skin, but I couldn't understand it. Surra- the surrounding looked very familiar to me. This is where Dwight's room was, or rather the corridor anyway. I was in agony, so gritting my teeth, I pushed myself up with my right hand. I was a mess, blood everywhere now, feeling faint, and collapsed onto the floor. I woke up again, but this time in the same place. I was in a puddle of my own blood. This made me react fast trying to find the source. I ran my leg up with my arm on my t-shirt. I was in twice as much pain as before. And this time I was really trying hard not to faint from the pain itself. Then I saw a light flashing. A little red light bleeping every so often. With sudden hope popping into mind, I pushed myself forward towards the light. It took me a while to get to light to see that I had seven missed calls and eight texts. The recorder had run out of tape but I tried to rewind to see what was on it. There was me screaming, struggling and crying out. There was me saying I'm going to go down to find it. But for about five minutes there was silence. Not even my footsteps. Then there was running and then it stopped. And this happened four or five times, running, and then stopped. It was freaking me out. And then they had, then there was a bang on the stairs, and again, then running and stop. And then we go shouting out that I couldn't get down. And then me hitting the floor. This really freaked me out. I turned round after hearing footsteps behind me. A figure of a man stood where I come from. He had a dirty white gown on, with long, black, greasy hair. I walked a step forward to see what he had in his hand. I went went white and felt incredibly sick. A a shiny knife dangled in his hand, and slowly a drip, drip followed after it. 
The only thing I thought it could be was blood. He started walking forward, only slowly, but he stopped before the darkness of the corridor ended. I blinked to see nothing. I, I have to get out of here. I limped around the corner to see again the corridor that seemed familiar. Room 71, 72, 73 and 74. Realisation hit me and I carried on to room 78. I pushed the door a little but it was stiff with rust. I forced my body weight against the door to reveal a large, a gap large enough to fit me through. A gentle breeze blew through the room making me shiver and this paper blew in front of me. I picked it up and looked at it. One story covered the double page spread. Hundreds murdered by one patient. The patient was found laughing in the corner, rocking back and forth. He begged them to kill him. The worst victim was the head of the head of the asylum being mutilated when he was found, with no eyes or eyes in his mouth, tongue was removed and fingers had been removed. Also, death was slow because the man was left to bleed. Dwight has been taken to prison and left in a padded room, but people have said that Dwight was later taken to hospital due to him facing from biting his own tongue off. He has, he has hit critical state and there is no probability he will survive. I looked up to see the dark figure in the corner of the room again with the knife. This time I saw his eyes. They were green, but with little hope and pure insanity. Dwight, that, that's not possible. I backed away into the opposite corner to him. I was breathing deeply. Again, pace it seeped into my leg. I dare not blink, no matter how much I tell myself he was not real. He got worse, in fact he was getting closer. I could not keep myself from blinking. My eyes started watering and stung now. My eyes closed for just a second. Hello Jane. I'm. Can you hear me? I hope you can. Uh, don't worry, you're safe now. Uh, oh, no, don't. No, you just need You just need help, sweetie. You, you, you've lost a lot of... Lo, lost. Oh, God, stab marks. You've got a lot of stab marks over your torso. Your hands are cut up, and so are your le so is your left leg. A voice echoed around my head. What? What do you mean? 